single men of Reddit, what made you definitely not want a second date with a woman you went out with? She rolled her eyes when I said she looked nice. She had put in a lot of effort. Criticized where I chose to eat. Complained about the music we went to see. I spent the whole date anxious, assuming that she was hating every moment, because, you know, she didn't have anything positive to say about anything. Then I get. I had a good time. Let's do this again. Nah I'm good. I've got enough negativity and mixed signals coming from my own brain. I don't need that coming from the outside too. Oh gosh she's a complainer, just like my mom. She always manages to find something to complain about even when the situation gets better. I try not to be like her on dates, it seems when people are constantly complaining they literally have nothing to contribute. I once went to a movie as a first date with a girl, her idea, bad idea. She got there late and the movie had already started. She then wanted to talk during the movie in the middle of the crowded theater. I didn't shush her or anything, but everything was a one-word answer, trying to end the conversation. She got up halfway through and said I was obviously not interested in her. She was right. LOL reminds me of this date I went on where the guy kept asking me if I was okay because you're being so quiet. Yeah, we're at a movie theater. So, I'm not proud of this one, but I'll share. Years ago, when I was still single, I met someone online. We chatted a bit, she seemed cool enough, and we decided to meet up for a burger at a place I knew downtown. Seemed like a kind of low-key thing. I get to the bar a few minutes early, and order a beer. Then finish it. Then, 45 minutes late, she rolls in. One, okay, cool. We all have jobs and have dealt with traffic and whatever, it happens. But no excuse, just a shrug and a that's how it goes sometimes. She sat down, we began chit-chatting. She asked about my work, I assumed it was regular nervous small talk too, but no, it was trying feel out how much money I made. 3. When she asked my job title, and I told her, she immediately suggested that we leave this casual pub place to hit up a wine bar down the block. Okay, I guess. It's a little more upscale than I had in mind, but okay. We walk to there, get seated, and then come the menus. 4. She ordered herself dinner. Some kind of seafood thing that cost an insane amount of money. And a bottle of wine. Not a glass, mind you. A $250 bottle of wine. I had already ordered a drink from the bar for myself, and got the impression that this was not wine to share. 5. She kept talking about much her job sucked, and how little it paid, and how no one at her work was fun to hang out with. Like the only conversation she had was bashing work and co-workers. With a few mildy racist undertones. 6. The whole time, she was texting friends to meet up that evening. I was invited, of course, to party with them all night, and, I assume, bankroll their fun. I discreetly went up to the bar, paid for my drink, and just left. Straight up noped out of there, without so much as a goodbye. From my messages when I checked in online later, I know that I stuck her with an almost $500 bill, and that she was going to sue me for it. Heard from the wine bar owner later, it was close to work, and a sometimes happy hour spot, that she apparently tried to skip out on the bill, but they stopped her and she paid. BTW my very next date was with the woman I eventually married. It went much, much better. I arrived at her place and she told me to hop in her car as she just needed to drop something off at a friend's house real quick. It wasn't a friend, it was someone she had an appointment to sell those hot oil infusers and their millions of scented inserts to. I sat in a stranger's home for 90 minutes while they smelled them all. She wanted to go to dinner afterwards and I asked her to please drop me off at the car so I could go home. She had a business to run. Guess it didn't even make it a whole first date. Edit, holy show, this blew up. 1. For everyone telling me I should have gotten an Uber slash LYFT. 
This was before those things existed, which wasn't all that long ago. 2. She was selling Sensi. 3. I never knew that r slash anti MLM was a thing, makes sense that it is. I'll have to drop by sometime and say hello. She forgot to take off her wedding ring at the second date. A few days before the second date, he walked by me with his wife downtown in a bigger city we both live in, what are the odds, right? He noticed me as well, sent me a text later. I told him to get his marriage sorted out before he calls me again. Guess what, he never talked to me again since, but did ask for on that same day. I don't understand. If you are not happy in your current relationship, either fix it or leave. Why try to make things more complicated and for everyone involved by trying to have an affair? Edit, to all of you thinking divorce is so problematic, it sure is. But it also shouldn't be the first thing to do when something in a relationship isn't working anymore, that's why I suggested to fix the relationship. Now maybe some of you haven't really been in such a situation, but when you are married and there is a lot to lose, you do everything you can. Fixing your relationship is not just about talking about problems or being aware of things that need more attention, it's doing something about it. Sometimes counseling is needed, sometimes compromises have to be made, OFC, if both value certain things more than their personal. If there is a lack of, or a lack of attraction, talk to a doctor first, then talk to your partner, find out what the issues are, since mostly it's psychological. The wrong solution is whoring around to see if someone else can satisfy your needs, because in the end it causes so much damage in other areas of the relationship that it makes everything even worse and more difficult to overcome. But sometimes, even kids are better off if the parents separate. Life is about making the best choices for yourself and the people you love. A marriage will not profit from one parent having affairs, this will cause massive trust issues which will then compromise everything. The argument he is having an affair only because he can't leave the relationship due to kids is so wrong on so many layers, it just baffles me how people can even think that this kind of behavior will benefit the kids. Because kids are not retarded. After a certain age, they will know something is up and when they realize one parent is around with strangers, that will not only destroy their worldview but also impact them in so many negative ways. If someone really cares about their kids, they don't go out looking for with strangers. They fix the problems at home first, because the kid's well-being should have highest priority. I've posted this before because it's so weird. I went for a meal with this girl I met through a dating app and it was going really well. We started talking about movies and then we decided to go to the cinema to go watch Inception. She said there was a cinema nearby but I didn't know the area at all, so I used the GPS on my phone and she held it and directed me. Once we got there we started walking inside and I realized I didn't have my phone in my pocket. I said I must have left it in the car and started to walk back to get it. She was trying to get me to leave it and saying we would miss the film but the phone was only about a week old so I was really paranoid about it. We checked the car for about 10 minutes but we couldn't find it. I asked her to check her jacket and bag but she said it wasn't there. A couple parked next to us so I asked them to ring my number because I couldn't find it. It started to ring and it was obviously coming from my date's handbag. She took it out and said she must have missed it. I thanked the couple and locked my car and as I turned back around she was walking the other way. I ran to catch up and asked what was going on but she was very dismissive and was barely talking. That's when I realized it probably wasn't an accident and just left her to walk home alone. Here's a text conversation we had the day after the second time we went out. First time we hit a couple bars so we were drinking which made it more bearable, decided to give her a second shot with a beach date but it sucked. Pretty much, she was just very negative and argumentative about almost anything I said. Me, hey thanks for driving yesterday. Anyway I don't wanna just ghost anyone cause that's pretty mean, but I don't think we really click. Good luck with your move. She was moving apartments that week. Her, shoot I should have guessed this was coming after how off yesterday felt. I appreciate your honesty. 
I know I poked you too much with the fishing comments but were there other things I did that were really off-putting? I'd like to know so I don't keep doing them. Me, dude work has been crazy busy this week so haven't really been on my phone. Responded like two days later cause I was actually really busy. Mainly I think we have different values and worldviews and our differing personalities didn't allow us to get past those OR discuss. Kinda seemed like a lot of the things I brought up led to negative responses which makes it harder for self-disclosure and leaves the conversation at small talk and prevents any kinda connection. Don't take this as an attack cause I think at the root of it all we just have different, clashing personalities and never really found common ground. Maybe I'm just being sensitive but I did feel like there wasn't much willingness to understand my interests, values, etc., and a lack of agreeableness from you so it felt as if I was almost being disparaged for my values and worldview. I like fishing and hunting and she was a high-horsed vegan type. Her, thank you for the thoughtful feedback. You're right that we have different worldviews but I was close-minded in my approach to getting to know you and making you feel welcome. I definitely came off judgmental and bitter on Sunday and I appreciate you explaining how that made you close off. Thanks again for taking the time to explain, and for giving me a shot in the first place.